Welcome to uh, Bangkok Chit Chat, another episode. Uh, today we have uh, two people representing uh, Bangkok expats. What they're doing is they've, they've created a, a group of volunteers who are actually assisting expats. And I think that's the interesting part of this, uh, this discussion. You know, why did they actually look at supporting expats rather than Thais? Or is it a combination of both? So I'd like to introduce uh, Michael Mester and Michael Theo. So guys, I'm just trying to sort of understand, you know, uh, for each of you, well, what is your own background? Why, why are you in Thailand in the first place? So let's say Michael Theo. Okay. Um, so I come to Thailand um, about six years ago, um, just come here to work um, for a technology company and um, fell in love with Thailand, decided to stay and have been working here since. Um, I met Michael, um, one of our partners and Steve, um, well, Steve firstly, very early on in my time here. I've known Steve, um, one of our partners for seven years, uh, but Michael, um, myself and uh, have known each other for a few years now. And um, yeah, this opportunity come up for us to take over the, the Bangkok expats um, page and um, we, we decided to jump on it. Right, okay, so, so basically between the, the three of you, you're sort of the founders of, not the founders, but you, you bought out the, the Bangkok Expat and you run that between the three of you, yeah? Yeah, correct, correct. So with that relationship, uh, you, you started, what I was discussing with Michael before, that there's this sort of, I was giving it a name of Bangkok Expat Helping Hands, yeah? So, yes. So how, how did this all, all come about? Uh, Michael, interject if you, if you like. Absolutely. So, um, when when the the COVID nineteen and the government response started to really unfold here in Bangkok and in Thailand, uh, it kind of became obvious to me, Mike, that uh, this is going to have a huge impact. Uh, on people from all walks of life here. And the biggest impact is going to have on, on those that are not so well off. Now, of course, there are millions of poor Thai people, um, but there are also expats, uh, foreigners living in Thailand that are not so well off, that are here because they really like the place, they're maybe married here. Um, they love Thailand for, for the long reason. And um, <clears throat> who's going to help them? Thais most likely will have some kind of family they can fall back on. But what about, uh, what about those that are now thousands of miles or kilometers away from their home and their relatives and their governments? Who's going to watch out for them? And, so, how, 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 how do you find the people to help? I mean, do they, do they apply or do uh, you get some form of reference? Or? I think yeah, we have um, the Facebook page, right, through the existing network. But maybe Mike, you want to go into that? Yeah, sure. We, we, we have um, different ways that, that, that both um, individuals who wish to help and individuals who need help. Um, can come through to us. So we, we, we knew that we were going to have large numbers of people um, needing and wanting to be a part of the service. So that's why we, we created the website, which is uh, bangkokexpats.org, which yep. enables people to, um, to first register um, their information and then complete a short form on the kind of assistance that they need. Um, so then we can get a clearer, clearer you know, a clearer understanding of, of how we can help, then one of our volunteers will contact that individual back and, and, um, and basically have a bit of a conversation with them, find out exactly how we can, we can put the services that we offer into, um, into action. And um, once we've completed that call, we, we will proceed and, and, and help. But for, for companies wanting to help, they can simply register online too, select um, you know, in which way they wish to, to, to support the course, um, which can be in many, many forms. Um, food donations, you know, obviously the, I understand that there are a lot of businesses in the, 
in the F and B sector at the moment, which are not trading, that have got unused stock, um, that will 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 just be going to waste. And if they would like a good home for it, they can they can fill out the form and we'll come and collect it from their location. Um, also, um, you know, we we need volunteers for for delivering hot meals and um, manning the phone lines, administration. So there's a lot of people at work. That, that make this this thing move. Um, obviously, we're still very early, but um, I think we've had great success so far um, with, with lots of media coverage, etc. Um, you know, which is just bringing light to the issues, which is um, people really don't know what to do at the moment. Yeah. So, I mean, when when you when you're talking about helping people, this is not just uh, the the permanent expat here; it's tourists as well. Uh, people who are basically stuck. But are, are you given references from you know, the embassy? Does the embassy contact you and say there are some some people that are, are stuck here? Can you can you help them? Uh, that kind of thing. Um, not currently. No. Everything that we do is um, basically just pushed out to to our community, um, the people that are that are a member of um, Bangkok expats. Um, right. So we. We of course, you know, would like to work with embassies, but obviously, you know, we've only just started as well, so we have to we have to grow into our into our um, into our boots, as it were, um, and well, gradually build. To, obviously, you want to sort of sorry, if, if they have some people, they could they could contact you to to give their their contact, and then you'd ask them to. Yeah, of course, we 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 remain um, we remain open. You know, um, like I say, we we. We are in need of, um, of further donations to food and things like that. So, if um, if anybody wants to step forward and, and help, then great. You know, that's fantastic. That's what we need. Yeah, well, we'll have the we've got some screens coming up showing people as we're talking, uh, but also we will have some information on the description as well, so people can contact you. Now, is this something which is going to be ongoing, or is it just for this COVID crisis? Of course, none of us know how long this situation is going to going to you know run for. But yeah, well, that's it. I mean, look, the, the, the thing is, to be completely honest with you, Andrew, the, we, we can continue for as long as people support the cause. Obviously, for the first initial four weeks of launch, Bangkok expats, myself, Michael and Steve, have decided to forego any of our advertising revenue and consulting revenue as a company for the next four weeks um, and use that money to drive the Bangkok expats helping hands initiative um, through the first phases whilst we, you know, we, we, we gain some, um, some, some knowledge of what we're doing. And obviously with that comes donations, et cetera. Um, but to, to keep the momentum moving forward, that's what we've done as a company to, to, to push this. So the answer to is that, you know, obviously we are a company and we need to make money as well. So after this four week period, you know, we, we won't be able to support it in the same financial manner. But obviously, if um, we're able to to get the support from you know the the general public and continue it, then obviously we will do absolutely. We we want to help. Okay. What what locations are you operating from? Is it just where your office is, or uh, is it multiple different locations with multiple people? We are we are basically utilizing the existing infrastructure that we have to our offices, but also our homes right. and. Uh, the venues of the businesses that partner with us. So there is an Irish pub that's running it. So we're using their facility to prepare some of the meals. Right. Okay. okay that's so great. one comment, Andrew, I wanted to make about the uh, embassy situation. And uh, if, if you have reached out to us, what I'm really surprised see is how little uh, the embassies or some of the embassies have actually been doing um, as we know like uh, foreigners from all parts of the world from all different countries in Europe also the United States the pattern is quite different there are those countries that I'd say look very well after the citizens that have been caught up in this mess and then there are those countries where you're like, where is my country? It doesn't even exist. Right. Um, I'm not going to name nations now here. I think uh, that's, that's for an investigative journalist to find out. But um, 
I was quite surprised, and to be honest, uh, sure, we would help. I mean, we don't turn down anyone right now. And if a Thai shows up and needs some food, we're not going to say, oh, you're not an expert, or you don't get any. But if an embassy would call up and, and give me a list of names where I should deliver something, then I'd really ask, okay, and what are you going to do? Right, okay, okay, that, that, that's yeah. fair enough. That's fair. I, mean, I think that from the embassy's point of view, they're looking at, you know, because this is something that's voluntary, not official, they're probably scared, and who are, who are you, et cetera. So, yeah, I can understand their point of view, but for referral, if they could give, if someone says, listen, help, I can't eat, I've got nowhere to stay, I'm stuck. Right. You can say, this Absolutely. has nothing to do with us, we're not taking responsibility, but there are some organizations like that, who may be able to help you. So that would be a nice... Yeah, but I think that there's a, there's a fundamental issue there, Andrew, before you, you know, that is that it shouldn't be down to Bangkok expats to, to be supporting people. It should be down to the embassies and be doing more. But the reality is that they're not. So when, host, when, when hotels are being shut and those hotels still have guests staying in them, where do those people go? What support is there here for anybody at the moment? You know, you get drips and drabs of information. Yeah, yeah. They're trying to organize flights and things, but I think people are in a very sticky position because, you know, what they plan to be uh, a, a two week holiday has turned into a six week uh, place you're stuck at and you probably haven't got enough money to be able to fly back. So I understand what you're saying there. Yeah, I don't know all the legalities, I'm sure. There could be a, an extended debate on it on the moral side and the legal side. Yeah, I think what you're doing is filling a gap, yeah, uh, which is very, very honourable. I think it's it's fantastic, and this is why basically you're on as well to see if we can get more people to assist. I understand what you're saying. What is the responsibility of the embassy of the uh, whether the British government or a European European Commission or whatever it is? Should they be standing up and helping and assisting? Yeah? Because yeah. the taxes, they'll always catch you when you die and probate. Yeah? Maybe it's time yeah, to exactly. die. Yeah? Right. You know, but on the other um, sorry, Mike, just what I, what, what I think the under, sure, we are a bit like, when you see all these poor people and you don't know where to go, you get a bit hungry. Um, but on the other hand, that's exactly why we're doing it. Yeah, we yeah. are. You pointed it right. We are. We are filling a kind of a gap, um, and uh, I think it's the right thing to do at this time. Nothing. Can you tell me what's what's a typical day's operation? You know, what do you cook? I mean, I've got a few pictures here, but uh, what sort of things do you cook, and uh, who does the cooking, and that kind of thing? What's a typical day? In, in in our case, about two to three times a week at my home. So we, we start around nine o'clock. It's my, my children, my two daughters, my wife and I. And we start cooking spaghetti. Spaghetti either with a vegetarian or with a meat sauce. Some of the receivers don't eat meat. And um, it takes about four hours. We get about 50 to 60 packs done in that time. And around noon time, delivery starts. And yeah, so delivery is sometimes partly done by ourselves, can't deliver 40 to 50 meals, because nobody's going to drive out for a meal to somewhere, it's not worth it, right? So we deliver it to hotspots, be it on the Pakamon, sea logs, and from, from there. Like, so it's the Bangkok based, yeah? So would, would you, if somebody said, listen, we want to be able to do this and in Paria or, or, and help and be part of this organization and you can, you know, and you instruct them how to go about it. Would you, would you be open to that or, or is it purely just Bangkok? I think what we can serve is Bangkok. Now, if there are others out there in provinces, Pattaya, as you mentioned, or, or anywhere actually, where there is need, we can definitely provide based on experience of a couple of weeks, a blueprint, of how to set this up, who to talk to, what to avoid, um, and, and, and uh, kind of keep it decentralized 
makes no sense for us to set up something remotely in Pattaya when someone's there who well, wants to do it. Yeah, that, that's what I'm really saying, because when it comes down to the, the, things, the things you're providing, from what, I, from what I've heard, is that you're, you're looking for people to help supply food, you're looking at uh, people to help provide a donation so you can buy food, because you can't get everything from, what, from one person. Some supplies red rolls. Yeah. Someone else needs to provide butter, you have to buy it. Uh, then you've got uh, for donations of, of physical product as opposed to just money, advice and help, and then also helping with deliveries. So they could come to a designated location, a hotspot, we collect yeah. that and deliver it for the area. Right. right? Exactly. Or the people could come to the location and collect. So, yeah. Well, we, we, we do, we, we have kind of like um, a bit of internal structure now. We, you know, we have, um, we have close to 60 people in our volunteers group. Um, but, the, you know, that's why we, we, we do everything online, because it helps us to, to, to put these, um, these applications in, uh, in a way where we know which each person needs. We know how to, to get that person serviced and turn around quickly. Um, because people come to us for help, you know, that generally means they need help now, not next week. So we, we do have systems in place, but um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, we, we have to be able to do the best we can for the area that we cover. So I think, yeah, we, we, would, we would be happy to, to help and advise people on, on how to set up an area. But um, like Michael said, I don't think it's, it's in, terribly um, necessary for us to, to centralise it too much from Bangkok. Yeah, but I think you, there's some other areas you were looking for assistance in is like, you know, visa immigration advice. Obviously, you'd want that from somebody who is qualified to talk about that, not just somebody from... Yeah, well, we, 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 we do have... That, that service is, um, is actually... A, we, we have a company, um, BKX Group, which is a visa um, service and advice and consultation company. So... Um, that's why we're offering these services. So the services that we've, we've put up on the .org website are things that we knew that we could facilitate. So for the mental health advice, we have three um, mental health practitioners that are servicing that line. So the, they are experts in what they do. For the legal and visa side, we also have a team of people on that. So if people need advice on their, their current visa arrangements or um, are unsure on what forms they need and what they need to um, what forms they need to complete. Then we have people available that are experts in that field also. You need more people to help you in that, or are you you on the advice side? Do you have enough? Because the more people you get, the more you have to manage. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, look, we're like I said, we're we're kind of growing into it at the moment, and I think that um, you know this is still very early in the the, yeah, the whole yeah. situation. We don't and have to go on. Yeah. No, that's it. And I think that, you know, the reality is, is that most people would have been paid a last month's salary at the end of the month. Um, we're currently in mid-month. So now we're starting to see a little bit of a surge in applications. You know, we're, we're running at probably seven people per day. Um, but I see that it's going to increase because as people's money runs out and the, the reality sets in that next month, they're probably not going to get paid because we all know the employment um, scenario here isn't exactly clear cut. Um, it could be, it could be, you know, a, a, a tough few weeks ahead for, for the, for the, for the group. Um, so yeah, we, we, we need to step our, uh, up our game on you know, collecting donations because that's the only way that we can keep it moving. Okay, well let's hope the people watching this uh, are gonna uh, actually take action. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll round up there. Is there anything, any particular message you wanna give, give out there? Help. <laughs> yeah, no, um, well I think, you know, from, I'll, I'll, I'll let Michael say for himself um, but for me yeah I just think that you know the expat, expat community are what drives our local business you know and it's it's funny that you know we're all of the local businesses are supported by these individuals and now I think it's um, it's time for 
to, to switch, switch, switch around, you know, and ask the business community to step up and, you know, contribute some food, contribute some time, um, try and help us help the people that have helped build your business over the last few years. Um, and yeah, let's do something good. You know, let's make it a little bit easier for people during this tough time. Very good. Uh, Michael? <laughs> now is just a time where those that are able to contribute something can actually do something meaningful. And that's mm, a message I could, would really like to deliver. Um, it's not necessarily that someone who's able to help need to come to the Bangkok expats and give us something so we can give it to someone who needs it. But I think everyone knows someone that is in need of something. And um, you can identify that yourself and you can reach out to people. And if it's just a word, I think it's so important uh, to, to those that receive right now help is that they know, yeah, someone's thinking about me. No, I'm not totally alone. I'm not forgotten. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's that much more than just the meal or the, the shampoo or whatever. Okay, listen, uh, both of you, thank you very much for coming on. And I hope uh, you know, people will share this and get a momentum behind this. Because I think it's something not just uh, for, for now, but even for the future, like a benevolent fund of a certain kind. Yeah? Uh, and you know, if people know where to go, they can assist people in this thing. Uh, because a lot of retirees, some people have to change in the that, some people are stuck and they can't go home because they've sold everything back home. So the modern going sort of in a which could be developed from it, but as you said, it's getting the support from the, the organisation. So listen. Yeah, and I think it is just important to add though that you know the support that we have had so far, you know, for 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 the businesses that have helped us. Um, you know, there's too many for us to list, but you know, a thank you to everyone who has supported so far. Um, and you know, we, we've, we've distributed close to 400 meals. So, you know, it does show that what, what people are donating is, is going to good use. You can, anyone, um, watching the video, you can follow the progress, um, of the, the, the charity or the, you know, the organization on our Facebook. And, um, yeah, here we'll post, um, like I say, regular updates, pictures of us out and about. Um, people receiving their food and of course thank yous um, to those that have donated it. Great. Listen both of you, thank you very much for coming on uh, and basically if anybody is watching, please uh, look at the link in the description uh, and, and contact uh, Bangkok Expats. There's a, there's a form in there, uh, very clear, very simple. Uh, just complete it, add it. There's also uh, an element where you can actually make a donation, whether it's a hundred baht, five hundred baht, a thousand baht, two thousand baht, whatever it is, everything helps. It's time to help other people. Uh, so don't forget to like, subscribe, and please share this, most importantly. And see you again later. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Thank you, Anne.